Hey everybody, my name is Orjan Nilsson and right now you're watching Toasted. I was about to say welcome, but I mean, this is more your show than mine, so thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my pleasure, man. It's good to have you here. Yeah. How was your gig? I saw a couple of shots, but the crowd went wild, man. Oh, dude, it was absolutely insane. It, this is one of those mind-numbing experiences where you just go back and go like, wow, did that just happen? Absolutely insane. You were rocking out yourself as well pretty, pretty hard. <laughs> it's impossible for me not to. I think <laughs> I have so much fun doing this. It's, it's, it's just... When I'm at, right up there, that's not a job. I mean, come on, that is a passion, it's a life. Uh, so it's just, wow, I just, I'm still not over it, man. This is insane. We've been talking to a lot of DJs here tonight, and uh, actually what, what they all say is the most important thing of this event is energy between the DJ and the crowd. Well, uh, that, that, that's definitely, I would say, chemistry in general. Uh, but yeah, like the energy out there in the crowd tonight, it's a very thankful job when you have that kind of crowd. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, definitely about energy and I think every single DJ has brought it tonight. So yeah, definitely. How important is the state of trance for you? Oh my God, this kind of skyrocketed my career, right? So it's uh, one of the most important gigs ever. And it's family, you know? Everybody here is family. It's How did you get involved? Like in the beginning? Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was showing a couple of uh, trans CDs back when I was 12, 13, and after that I was just hooked on the idea. No shit. Yeah, it's, uh, how can you not be? Uh, come on, this music is absolutely infectious. And then all of a sudden, when I was uh, in 2005, I sent a demo into Armada, and <laughs> Armin van Buren added me to Amazon, and boom, here I am. Holy <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah. This is, yeah, I mean, so, so how did you find out? I mean, that he started playing your music? Well, basically, uh, there's this guy called uh, Dungeon Ryers, who's, uh, he was he's a member of Primer back in the days. And he was the guy who sent it into Armin. And Armin said, dude, I love your music. And then he played it on a state of trance. And I heard it, I'm like, did, this has to be a joke. Somebody is like pulling a fast one on me, even though it's a really good fast one, but they still did it. <laughs> and I just realized, okay, he started playing my, all my tracks. And he loved it, and he got in contact. He got actually started talking a lot, and uh, he just kept supporting me all the time. It was insane. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, when you got somebody like Armin van Buren supporting you, I mean, your confidence level kind of raised a bit. So you want? I, I felt okay. Now it's time to do this full time, and it worked out. Who would know? Pretty good. Hey, like I told you when we first met, like a couple of seconds ago, yeah. you were singing "Party Girl" on the radio for like 30 million people. Well, and actually pretty good. Really? You thought that was good? Yeah, you got a lot of props there. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Barbara Girl is an old Norwegian slash Danish classic. Uh, so it's an undying track, which is I have close to heart from my younger days. I mean, uh, it's Life in Classic is fantastic, so how can you not love it? I think, well, I think I like your version better than the original. <laughs> Even though Aqua is great, I mean... <laughs> I gotta admit that track is actually really good, even though it's uh, it's a bit funny and it's a bit juvenile. It's still an awesome track. Yeah. Hey, talking about uh, trans music, um, we've been doing interviews since '91. Uh, um, back in the days, I would never expect this scene to be alive and kicking in 2017. You know what? I think this scene will never die yeah. because no one will ever get tired of rhythm and melodies and the kind of vibe you have in one of these events. This will never die, we'll just get bigger. That's that's my prediction of it. But I mean, dance is so popular, especially EDM is so popular right now that people are like, well, we've had the hate now, the only way is down. No, because that's the thing. EDM in general means electronic dance music. So uh, like everybody's like talking about EDM is actually a big room, but EDM is electronic dance music and because of all the different genres and subgenres you have, it will never die because there will always be supporter of these tracks. And the technology is there. That's why it will never die. So, yeah. I was uh, surprised to find out that even though we are in Utrecht, in Holland right now, there are so many nationalities here. You know what? That's one of the most humbling experiences. When you see a uh, trans family from South Korea, Brazil, uh, like all over the world, every single continent is just amazing. And it's. Uh, that's when you know you've done something right. You can see people with your sign coming from, let's say, Argentina. And you're like, wow, they can hear me down there. And I'm from all the way up north. 
I'm in the last mainland before the North Pole. <laughs> and people in Argentina listen to my music. That's some pretty sick stuff. That's really yeah. Sick. yeah. Hey, I've been uh, plowing through your discography a uh, little. Um, some titles that struck me was uh, Crispy Duck. <laughs> yeah, that was a collaboration between me and John O'Callaghan. We were in uh, Australia and we started up a track. And the day before we started the track, we've had some really nice crispy duck at a Chinese restaurant. So we thought, okay, this is pretty nice too. So let's call it that. That's how things get named. <laughs> so what happened in Amsterdam that you decided to write a track about that too? Oh my God. I mean, Amsterdam is the city of dreams for anybody who wants to be in this kind of music. I grew up listening to people playing at the Rye Center and everything. You know what? That's one of my biggest regrets, that I wasn't old enough to be at the Rye Inner City Center when Inner City was a part of it. Really? Because I was there. I'm old. It was an exceptional mix of so many styles. It wasn't just Chesto. I mean, there were so many people. Oh, yeah. And now you're making me jealous, so thank you. But uh, yeah, definitely. Well, you earn way more than I do, so. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I can't tell that. But it's like I got a bit. Uh, that's uh, that's still something. I that's when I got into it as well. Like the DJing stuff, I got into in around around '98 and '99 when I saw like Armin playing all the big gigs and uh, Tiesto playing all the big gigs. Even did Sean and, and Yuan Gielen back in the days as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's like that. That it's sort of my culture as well. So it's I've been having it. Yeah, since I was young. It's in my blood, man. I can't get rid of it. Another thing that I love is uh, you were actually a producer who also releases albums. And this is a thing that not too many people do now. A lot of DJ producers decide for their career it's probably more efficient to release singles. Uh, you have one out uh, yourself uh, actually uh, right now, Renegades, together with uh, Jochen Miller. But you also produce albums. Even though your last album, uh, No Sane Out Of Me, was from 2013. Yeah. Well, the thing about albums is the fact you get m much more artistic freedom. You can go further lengths, push boundaries more, because it's your view of music, you know what I mean? My first album was called In My Opinion. I should have called every single album that, just because it really is, in my opinion. So, but uh, I think making an album is a statement from me, as well as like uh, getting people to, you know, listen to the music more. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can release singles every single week, more or less, but an album is a statement. So when's the next album due? I would say late summer this year. That's good news. Yes. Because, I mean, that took you three years, so it must have been a special one. Actually, it, it, it more or less took four years, yes, and it has been a long time coming. But unfortunately, it's sometimes really hard to combine all the touring, the touring life and like traveling so much and mixing an album as well. So like, I, I've, been, I've, I've been producing uh, this album for one and a half years already. So, uh, so how many tracks are done? Actually quite a few. I'm not going to tell you the exact number yet, but it's going to be quite a few tracks. So about 10 tracks are done already? Probably more. Shit. <laughs> so how many tracks will you produce in the album? Because to me, normally, if you know, and I would think final, there would be like 12 tracks maybe, max? You know what? That's what I was thinking as well. But unfortunately, it's like I'm, 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 I, when I produce stuff, I produce quite fast. Plus, I love producing, so it's probably going to be more tracks than that. So it's hard to kill your darlings, probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's good news, because I mean, and that's the thing, you know. I mean, I'm a music lover, and if I'm a fan of a DJ producer, I don't want a single. I want shitloads of music. Exactly. A lot. Like, I gotta be honest with you. It's like there's gonna be a lot of singles from the album. It's gonna be different versions of it, and I think people are gonna enjoy that too. But in the end, this is gonna be like a little bit view of what I can do. It's more of an artistic album, and then it might be a clubbier version of the album coming out later on. Hey, what holds the near future for you? I mean, the album will be in will be in, in summer. So, before that, what what are your plans? Oh, so many gigs, uh, so many releases too, because a lot of singles are coming out before the album. Uh, so it's going to be a very, very, very busy start to 2017. But you know what? Uh, it's that kind of year. Is that it? Just feels right. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this, and I'm going to focus a lot more on my own label as well, called In My Opinion. So. Um, Guys. Why call it that? Well, because you have a strong opinion. I very much so. Good. Because it's like if I sign a track, it's in my opinion. It's like in my opinion, this is good, so I'll release it. It's that simple. Yeah. What struck me is that uh, you have a lot of uh, outspoken fans, and I was going through your Instagram feed, 
and there was a reaction of a female singer-songwriter from the States thanking you for playing a, a track that you probably collaborated on. It, and then it struck me like, wow, you're playing here, she's listening to your set, hearing that you're playing this track, and like 10 seconds later, it's yeah. worldwide. It's so awesome. It's 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 a brand new world. Yeah. Uh, nothing is contained anymore, and it's uh, out there for everybody to listen. And you know what? People deserve this. People deserve to listen to this kind of music everywhere in the world. So it, it's kind of humbling as well seeing the people when I play tracks from other people. It's just like uh, it's awesome to see. Especially this. I, I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about Jess, but yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of her. A big big fan. So uh, that she actually recognized that. That was pretty good. I like that. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much for your time, man. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.